So Christian sold it to me like a lunchtime repair and I told him it's not. Oh my God. So today is kind of a sad day because I gonna get my mall crawler here ready to be sold. Because I got the other one here sitting in the garage. Little bit concerned it's gonna start to rain right in the middle when I got everything taken apart. So Christian sold it to me like a lunchtime repair and I told him it's not. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a much easier repair if you're not replacing the oil pump. You know, we have an oil pump. We're not gonna replace the oil pump on a car with 124,000 kilometers, which we are selling. Opening the oil filter by two turns so that it drains empty. Yeah. And I'm not using this drain tube, okay? I'm just not ready for it yet. I'm old school. I wanna see that oil draining out through a drain plug. Okay, and by the way, we have already done a timing belt and oil pump replace video on a Discovery 4 for any step-by-step -step instructions. Check that one out. This one is more a video where I show what we all do to this vehicle before we sell it. We want to sell a good vehicle, a well-maintained vehicle. You're going to get a packet. A mail. It's oh my God, look at these vans. They are for Philip with a bear on it. Let's so hope there's no oil. Absolutely no oil. What are you so, talking about? So, the vans. Sorry for interrupting the important <laughs> stuff. They are so cool. They are the prettiest vans I have ever seen. Good, good. I, I continue here, okay? It's a car repair channel, not a shoe channel. My goal when I'm draining coolant is that I'm not getting completely spilled, okay? Hopefully when I open the cap now. Wow. You're not filming coolant. Oh, okay. It's, it's oh, he because I'm driving mostly backwards, okay? That's why. <laughs> he mounted the tires wrong. No, you hold the camera upside down. You're wrong. I can fix that by editing, okay? <laughs> now, also, when we do a timing belt, we take the starter motor out. We go the whole way. We're not some of those people who use like a paint mark and don't move the crankshaft after the paint mark is on. He blocked the driveway and I have to drive Philip to the train station and he didn't want to have me take the Queen. Why am I not selling the Queen instead of our black discovery? And the reason is very simple. The Queen got too many issues. I can't sell it. I don't want to get into discussions. Plus, I haven't driven it long enough. <laughs> and yes, I don't like selling cars. I actually also don't like buying cars. We did that this morning with Christian's brother and it was a debacle. We should really make a debacle t-shirt. Look at that, Christian made aluminum bolts to keep the... Those I gonna take out. They're not gonna <laughs> go with the vehicle. I made like an Instagram post on those and everybody went like, oh, I just used two tie wraps. So I gonna put on two tie wraps and that's how I sell the vehicle. He wants those, it's 500 euros more. <laughs> Aluminum made by LR Time completely. And there was no appreciation whatsoever. Everybody went like, oh, I put tie wraps on. You know what? I gotta take them off right away so I don't forget. <laughs> oh my God. I just hope by the time that video comes out, the car's already been sold. So check that out. Here's proof that we already changed the transmission oil and filter one and a half years ago. I drove 12,000 in total with it. So it was about 10,000 ago. Yeah. It took us a while before we had this problem with the oil leak fixed. Yeah. You know, you can check out those videos, what the reason was why we got this cut. It had serious transmission issues and two nice videos resulted in this. I think they're some of our best ones. Yeah. <laughs> also, did you see how dry it is between the engine and the transmission right here? It's a 2015 well, Christian. Well, the new one is completely oiled up. It has an engine failure. Yeah, but that's no reason that the oil is coming out there, okay? Yeah, yeah. So this thing is completely dry. See here everywhere. You hardly ever get one that dry. Yeah. See this drive shaft here is new. The previous owner had some vibration in the transmission and they sold him a new drive shaft for 900 euros. Yeah. Stupid idiots. So remember, getting the starter motor out on a Discovery 4 is, according to Christian, supposed to be easier than on a Discovery 3. Well, I talk a lot of shit when the day is long. <laughs> There's not even oh my God. on this bolt. And no copper grease. Still waiting for the disaster. Yeah, don't forget to open the breezer hole. <laughs> Not our first oil bag. <laughs> and look at what he made for the queen. 
Oh, nice. Wow. Do you see that? Oh, it's not draining fast enough into the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we made a mess. Look at that. Well, the stupid thing didn't drain the oil fast enough. Okay, I'm going to take Philip to the train station so, while Christian No video cleans. footage for you guys for a few. <laughs> Brand new brain plug. 28 newton meters. Okay. So I got the starter motor out. Took me about 35 minutes now. But I did see one thing here. I inspected what my oil level sensor plug does. And you can see there's oil inside. So this thing is leaking through the connector and this oil is going to pull through the wiring harness. That needs to be fixed and I don't have a part to fix that today. So I got the wheels already removed. I need to do that anyway. This way I can lower it further down. It's still pretty high up to work on, but better than with wheels. This piece out. <laughs> so he says everything is easy peasy from now on. Nothing is easy peasy. Like getting a hose? <laughs> yes. I have no sympathy for your complaints. You wanted to do that. Find out how tough this one is. <laughs> oh. Definitely no cup of grease. So no? we've never been in here on this end. But we have been in Discovery Force more than enough. No cup of grease. We'll take this hose out for excess. Yeah. But it's really, really hard. Yeah. Test. If this thing gets stuck when you close it like this, that's oh, no does. good. Yeah. I'm taking all this vacuum crap out of the way without taking it apart, okay? This is why most people mess up their turbocharging system because they take this stuff apart and then they don't put it together right and then the car goes in limp mode. All this still connected, but I can put it nicely back here. So yes, we can change the belt. So you didn't prep for that repair? Yeah, I did, but I don't have that roller on stock. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. There it is. This part, you gotta inspect that it doesn't have any cracks here. Oh so. my god, then you better inspect that. So that takes a lot of time. There are 16 bolts here. It feels like there is one still left. Okay, I know where it Wow, look at that. <gasps> what is happening here? This is belt, what you see here. I've never seen that, even in a broken engine knot and on Reiners. This Rainers. is completely normal. This is belt dust, okay? <laughs> and you also see that there is zero oil because the belt dust would be soaked in oil. So this is really nice. We don't have an oil leak. Cool. There we go. The pin goes nicely in. Yeah. And it's second. like a six millimeter pin. Don't ask for the dimensions, please, or for a drawing. <laughs> Look, this Just one goes get also in nicely yep. all the way. So now I hope my plug goes in. If you look in my mirror, you can see that there is the hole in the flywheel. It's that little bit of an elongated hole, okay? There's my plug now installed. So that's the roller and now the belt which is probably one with the most miles we ever took out. Here's your souvenir of the mall crawler. That looks brand new. You would see where on these it would be already way too late. Like some of the Toyota videos, what you see once in a while, where it was running like only on a strand. It's a Deco, OEM is always Deco. Yeah, and check for oil leaks. This is what it looks like. No oil leaks, I'm gonna clean this up. Here's our oil pump which is of course the latest version. No reason to change that for me now because I'm selling this vehicle and it's only 125,000 kilometers. You got your coat. <laughs> so yesterday I was in a sports bra and short pants and today I'm double coated. It's okay. freaking cold. This one is actually wasted. You feel it. You feel it? No. Anybody can hear that. You know, your tiny fingers can't wiggle that. 
<laughs> okay. It's good according to Vera. I'm so cold. Christian, we have just about 700 euros worth of spare parts to put into the mall crawler. There is no time to clean today. So it's one week later. We had a full stop last week because we ran into a couple of issues. And at one point, Vera didn't let me improvise anymore. <laughs> I had to order some parts. So let's go check out the parts. I made him order just about 700 euros worth of spare parts. Everything she said is out of context. <laughs> And everything I said okay. is true. The first item which was worn out was actually this idler pulley. Oh my god. I had this one on stock. This is really an inferior spare part. This is something we would take on vacation just to have a spare. The timing belt idler pulleys, okay? Oh my god. Okay. These would probably be fine, another hundred thousand, just like in a Toyota. But then we ran into the idler pulley. The one I ordered cost me big problems up on install. The one I bought from SKF, which is supposed to be a good brand, had only like a six millimeter hex here, and it twisted right away when tightening. I actually ran in this problem before, and I was dumb enough to buy it again. Six versus 10, it don't work. You can't get the tightening force with this one. So I went out and bought now a timing belt kit, so I bought the Ena. Ina exceeds OEM quality on a Land Rover. So that timing belt kit, believe it or not, complete was only 110 euros. That's unbelievable. Usually it goes for like 230. It comes with the OEM Daiko tensioner. Oh. It comes with the NTN rollers and it has a date code of 23. And the belt is an Ina Scheffler belt, okay? That also exceeds OEM quality. I bought the entire assembly that also exceeds OEM. That's good. Yeah. I thought at first that part is bad because it wiggles here a little bit. So I bought me the inner one right here, which was about 70 euros. It's the same manufacturer. You can clearly see this. Okay. But this one wiggles just as much, wiggles just as much. So I'm not going to put this in because I'm not for replacing parts prematurely. This one only got 124,000 on the clock and they typically last about 250. And we want to sell this vehicle. And if we replace now everything, what's the second owner going to do? He's going to get all <laughs> desperate sitting on his couch and getting into a divorce. Versus if he has like a simple failed tensioner, gives him something to do. He can write posts into the Facebook groups, you know, maybe <laughs> with some pieces of the belt underneath the car shooting it saying, hey, did anybody have that before? You know, we just help people this way. Another thing I bought, which is really important when you do a timing belt, because of easy access and low cost, is actually the water connection housing, okay? That is sitting above the V. It breaks around 200,000 kilometers potentially. On your Arim's Discovery 3, it split here. It leaks so damn slowly that the car hardly doesn't get wet in the beginning because yeah. it's hot in the V and you're losing your coolant and there's no coolant below the car. So this is like a slow going creeping leak before it bursts. And then people show a picture again with water on the floor saying in the Facebook group, hey, did anybody have that before? And then other people go off. Yeah, it's this and it's that. And they don't even know what engine it is. Really impressive, okay? <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, that's like if you would pee on the floor, send the picture to the doctor and ask what's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like you got low blood sugar. <laughs> I, I got a few more OEM seal rings, which we run across. <laughs> The sun is out. I can't believe it. Oh yeah, this is going to be Except easy, for you. no sweat home run. We're going to be done like in two hours. That's what I always think before we start. <laughs> I'm waiting. Oh. <gasps> if the pump is not weeping, it's not leaking. There's a special weep hole. Cool. Okay, and it feels good. Yeah. It has no play. Putting on some silicone grease. And used pump goes back in because it's still perfect. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. 11 Newton meters. Two brand new pulley wheels. Put some Loctite on, okay? So yeah. So you can't confuse them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do get torqued, of course. 46 Newton meters. 
And no, the extension does not change the torque. Yeah, this is still our favorite desktop mechanic comment. Climbing belt back in. New belt. We got, I think, four videos where we show this step in detail. And oh, yes. We're going to link a couple of those in the video description where you have the entire oil pump change on Discovery 3 and Discovery 4 step by step. And here you're just going to hear it click when it's done. Yes, exactly. What is really important that this is a 10.9 bolt you're using for that tensioner. All OEM bolts are 10.9, by the way. I do use a little bit of Loctite on this bolt and it only gets 25 Newton meters. Some of you won't watch the old video and then they're going to screw it up. Okay, when I put the timing belt on, I stretch it right here tight. Then I go here clockwise on this pulley wheel, put the timing belt on, go into the next available tools, route the belt over the next idler pulley, keep it stretched, go here. Oh clockwise put it on into the next available tools and in this position I put on the tensioner a pain to film <laughs> Okay, now I'm tensioning this until this little notch is in the window now we tighten it 25 Newton meters You can see it. I don't I hope the notch is right in the window here one thing we do is we adjust the timing belt tension at the lower end of this little window. You don't want to go on the other end of the window because it increases that timing belt tension by too much. And what happens long term is that these spokes in these pulley wheels will crack if the tension is too high. And these timing belt tensioners have also quite a large tolerance. We actually made a measurement once where we measured the timing belt tension yes. with various different rollers based on adjusting that little notch into the window. Yes. Maybe I cut some footage of it. Yeah, we never here. published that. Vera didn't like my first lecture, so I'm going to have to redo it. You guys don't see the first one. Measuring the belt tension in Newton, going by belt weight and drum lengths, um, and it measures the frequency and calculates that over in Newtons. Vera has me doing the third lecture now, okay? Hopefully I'm not going to screw it up again. Now we measured the belt tension in Newton using a drum meter. It gives us an idea how much we can influence the belt tension by adjusting the belt tensioner differently. And the lesson we get out of this exercise is now that you can double your belt tension. 167. So it goes up quickly. Mm, when you get Christian, you have to go down to 600 Newton meters. We're going to go a little bit further down because it's unnecessarily high. Don't forget to take Steve's bolt out, Christian. Steve's yeah. socket is still in yeah, the socket. Steve would laugh his ass off if I forget that. <laughs> When you go to pull the belt around the pulleys, it can slip. So get yourself a socket and jam it in there under there. And that will keep the belt from slipping. I mean, it okay. was a close call yeah. once. <laughs> Steve, your socket is out. <laughs> Good. Tighten the pulley wheel bolts with 23 Newton meters. And done. Perfect. Now I can remove the timing plug here in the engine. Okay, taking the timing pin out. Yeah. So two revolutions. Okay, pin goes in nicely. Pin goes in nicely. Okay. And I also want to check underneath. Let's see if I can get here a better angle this time. See the plug is in, okay? Oh my god, I knew the new belt. Okay, here's the new part. It has even the same stamping. It comes from the same manufacturer. But this part comes with black rings. I'm not going to use them because the original rings are silver and the L ring for one euro a piece are the OEM O rings and I'm going to put them in here. Yep. This way we have no risk using bad rubber. Yep. And make sure it seats not. Oh. What? That O-ring feels loose. Oh. So this O-ring doesn't feel tight anymore. Here, I got an old diesel cooler here. And the O-ring we got to fit is a 20 by 2.5. It fits perfectly. Okay, so I got a new O-ring, old O-ring. Some silicone grease. There was even a pop. There we go. Yeah, yeah that feels a lot pop. better. Dad showed up. He's 84. He's going to help me putting that timing belt back in. Yes. Yeah. 
11 Newton meters. Cleaning of the belt dust. Okay, but yeah. nice and clean. Yeah, perfect. So this goes back in and I, and I try not to screw this up. Oh my god. So 16 bolts to 10 Newton meters. Okay, one, 10, 16. Okay. Oh, I can't believe it. What? We've screwed up again? We forgot to mount the idler here. Oh shit, so all 16 bolts have to come undone again. Yeah, that looks rather important, Christian. <laughs> and I bet you no desktop mechanic would have seen that. Yeah. Oh, that sucked. <laughs> it gets torqued between 70 and 90 Newton meters and we're gonna do 75. 75? And we'll screw it on and torque it off camera. <laughs> for you guys, this was like 10 seconds. And for us, it was 15 minutes <laughs> and some back pain. You know, you make mistakes, you learn from them. Well, I tell you, I tell you one thing. I didn't learn a damn thing from that. <laughs> yeah, no, you learned that you better pay attention the next time. <laughs> so we are a little bit spoiled because we are so used to body off and engine out. Repairs and installment. Good. Okay, good. Pulling fan pulley goes back in. Cooling hose goes back on. Yes. Goes in this corner or in this corner? Doesn't it latch in? It's torqued to 47. Idler goes all the way down. Can't put it in wrong. To 47 Newton meter. You're already hungry, right? It's almost 12. Good. So we eat breakfast at 7 and then we work all morning here. Yeah. A new continental belt, which is impressively only 14 euros. Okay, that's in. Oh, that was a pain. Because people make a whole video about that. <laughs> okay, getting all the hoses and vacuum stuff back together. Butterfly all cleaned up perfectly and when it's cleaned up it's not stuck anymore. You can find a video on our channel about intake manifold cleaning. That's exactly the recipe I used here to clean it. Okay. Exactly, it's a Heisenberg video. Nice and clean. Okay. They are fairly expensive. Yeah, how much? I think like 12 or 15 euros a piece. Oh, that is expensive. And this gotta go on here nicely. Yeah. And we're gonna clean up our intake and put it in. Oh my God. Hard. Our intake manifold here is actually pretty clean, I gotta say. Yeah. You wanna check out the one from this mall crawler? I took that off just to look inside. But I actually purchased Drosselklappenreiniger. He's not gonna use it. Oh. Oh my god! The least maintained Discovery 4 is what we bought. We're gonna fix it. The worse it's broken, the better it is for us. I'll put some silicone grease on these. Beautiful. And here, it's stuck everywhere. <laughs> this is the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Don't use brake cleaner. Yes. Use mass airflow sensor cleaner. Beautiful. Perfect. Water connection back in. Like a charm. Yeah. Oh, did you hear the click? Yeah. <sighs> That's a home stretch. It's a home for stretch. For us, that oh. repair. And then we have so much more to do. Oh my God. Before we put the coolant fan in, we put a good dose of copper grease onto the cooling fan hub. Okay? Yeah. This way, we get it back off, you know, on one of our long 1500. <laughs> mile through the desert trips we take in Germany here. <laughs> okay, ah, there you go. Oh, it's stuck. Gotta land this connector here. So, that was a bad actually. <laughs> Unbelievable. In. Those were really nice clicks. Yeah. Take hose back in. Okay. And don't forget that. Oh, and don't forget and that, hose. that hose. This is now a really important hose. It controls your turbocharger. 
And oh gotta go God. on here. And if you forget this one, your car will go in limp mode. And that's it. We can put the oil filter in while we're here. Oh my God. Of course, we're gonna check if it has chips inside now. Beautiful, no chips whatsoever. Yeah. So we're gonna keep this filter in a plastic bag. That car is for sale, not on sale. New oil filter, new O-ring. Now the filter goes in here on a four. There. Okay, now we're done in the engine bay. We're gonna put in the starter motor. Look at that pretty picture, huh? So I'm gonna mount the starter motor while Vera is gonna get something to drink. <laughs> Thank you. This is the oil level sensor oil stop cable. This is a used cable I bought at eBay for 45 euros. It's 110 from Land Rover. And Edgar is hiding his beer over there. Ah, I thought <laughs> it is yours, Christian. Okay. I got the oil stop cable installed. You can clearly see I got a cable looped in between the oil level sensor. Okay, one more thing we got to do tonight because we're not allowed to make noise tomorrow on Sunday. We're gonna take the wheel spacers out. We're not gonna sell it with the wheel spacers. No, we're gonna keep them. Too big of a discussion in Germany. Too big of a discussion with desktop mechanics which then come by and want to buy the car. <laughs> All four are off. They're gonna go on our new mall crawler. Once we fix the engine, someone put green coolant in, Christian. That's why the engine broke. Well, we never replaced the diesel filter, looks like, because it's a Land Rover. So let's put a new one in. <laughs> it's almost six o'clock in the evening, Christian. I'm done. Okay, and we're I'm still really not done. done. And well, we, we started have... at eight. Okay. And this time I'm not gonna screw that up. Okay, filter is in. Almost missed that one. But I keep a record and it wasn't on there. And we still don't know if it's leaking or not because we have no oil. It's and not no leaking. And it's evening. I found another problem. This bracket ripped open. You can see that and it came loose. Oh. So I got the pump fastened. You can see I just built like a U shaped bracket and put this over it. It holds it together really well. So after four days, we finally can fill the fluids back in. Brake fluid level is good. This fluid was replaced just before we got the vehicle. Yeah. Gotta make sure I hold the bottle correctly so I don't get any desktop mechanic comments. Now we're filling 5W40 DPF, which is an ACR C3 oil from Kestrel Magnatech. That's the perfect oil for the TDV6 2.7 and 3.0 once the vehicle has more than 80 to 100,000 kilometers on it. Don't believe the OEM spec from 5W30. They only do that to reduce the emissions by one or two percent. It makes absolutely no sense to run that oil. It is better to invest your money in frequent oil changes right. because the Discovery 4 especially has a problem with diesel dilution in the oil and the lubrication properties are lost. So frequent oil changes, no more than 8,000 kilometers instead of buying the most expensive oil and thinking you're doing something good for your engine. If you have diesel dilution from like 15,000 kilometers, you're running like a 0W15. Yeah. Run 5W40 instead of 5W dumbass like Land Rover recommends. We got to fill the coolant and then we can start it. it oh, okay. That in. We open this one a little bit. Yes. And we open this one a little bit. Now fluid lasts about up to 10 years, but you should actually replace it more often because if you don't replace your coolant fluid, it will cause corrosion over time and then it gets expensive. You are doing enough repairs on your <laughs> Land Rover that you will f more frequently change the coolant because you have to take it out, you have a spill. No Land Rover Discovery coolant lasts eight years. <laughs> no. Oh my God, that didn't sound good. Oil pressure is there. Oh my God, sounds beautiful. Now the third filling. It's between okay. And 0 0.5 liter, but yeah. we didn't keep the wait time, so that's probably okay. We filled 5.7 liters. The last thing we got to do to complete the service is now reset the service interval. Google 
gap diagnostic. It costs a couple of hundred euros. It's not an app you can download in the App Store. Reset the service interval. Succeeded. Okay. Now the last thing I got to do is set up our maintenance job in our Sprit Monitor app, which you can download in the App Store. There the vehicle is set up and I go to Spendings and here I got my maintenance set up. I have my kilometers, the date, maintenance, and here I can type in text and I wrote down everything I installed and what I did. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and we forgot to check the air filter. <sighs> filter. Oh, he's going to get a new one. You think so? This air filter is cleaner as it would ever get in it's Australia. It's falling apart. Brand new Mahana. Oh, look at that. Now, there's not much to watch out for when you replace an air filter, you would think. But the workshops, many times, do not seat the air box here in the front correctly. And then it's bending open and then it's drawing false air. So we're going to check the interior cabin filter as well. There we go. It's perfect. Yeah. No new cabin air filter required. And Christian will detail that car, of course. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's it for this week's episode. There will only be one more video on this car, I think, and that's when we do the detailing, and then we will put it into the paper to be sold. Yeah. After almost two years where I had this car. At this point, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support, and... We'll see you next Sunday. Okay, I think when I drive it, I'm gonna have to fill a little bit more coolant fluid. I'm gonna have to check the air conditioning and the brakes, which are new. And after that, I take it up on the lift one more time and check for leaks. And Christian will do new TÜV. Yes, we need TÜV as well. So I think if that would have been a repair in the workshop, it would have been at least two and a half thousand for an inspection like this. So and whoever gets that car is going to drive trouble free unless the crankshaft snaps. <laughs> there goes the old one. Best inspection. So this thing is going to be sold, which is a 2015 SDV6 3 liter 258 horse with 125,000 kilometers on it. It comes with the black 20 inch rims. These rims gonna stay, these are winter tires. This car is the black edition, so it has the black inlay here on the grill, and it got black inlays here. Now this is not an Ad Blue. that's the regular diesel. It does have already the start-stop, and it does have already front suspension bushings, including lower suspension arms, completely renewed. So I would say, if it doesn't snap a crank, this vehicle is ready to go. Comes even with a dash cam up here, permanently installed. It's also a rear dash cam installed. The vehicle does have the dynamic cruise control here. It's the seven seater premium sound. You can see the speakers there in the back. It's premium leather. You can see the double stitching here. It got the memory seats here. It got the automatic steering wheel right here. Of course, an HSE comes with the sunroofs. Beautiful car. It's gonna be really tough to let it go.